Assalamualaikum, we are from group 4 and today we will present about walking gait analysis. My name is Mom Ahiri and my group members are Alia Fateha, Alif Iskandar, Nadia Natasha and Kidran. First, I will introduce a little bit about walking gait cycle. Walking is known as a complex cyclic action which consists of several important movements through progressing the walking gait cycle during situation that need us to walk slowly, fast walking, or walking during an injury. Walking gait is an analysis of the three phases of ambulation, which is an essential part of the diagnosis of various neurologic disorder and the assessment of patient progress during rehabilitation and recovery from the effect of neurologic disease a musculoskeletal injury or disease process or amputation of a lower limb. Walking gait is formed by a stand phase which consists 60% of our walking gait progress during which one leg and foot are bearing most of all of the body weight and covered up by a swing phase which consists another 40% during which the foot is not touching the walking surface and the body weight is borne by the other leg and foot to complete a perfect walking gait cycle. The sequences that occur in the cycle is the first one is registration and activation of the gait command within the central nervous system and second the transmission of the gait system to the peripheral nervous system and third contraction of muscle fourth generation of several forces and five regulation of joint force and movement across synovial joints and circular segments and lastly generation of ground reaction forces. Now I will explain about several situations have been conducted to measure and investigate the muscle activation and details about the motion of walking gait analysis to complete walking cycle in each situation which is the first one is we will explain about normal walking gait and next is fast walking gait and lastly is simulating an injury gait okay next i will explain about normal walking gait phases face by face for phase one it is called heel strike or initial contact consists of short period and begins the moment the foot touch the, touches the ground and is the first phase of double support this phase involves 30 degree flexion of the hip, full extension in the knee and ankle move from dorsiflexion to a neutral position then into plantar flexion. Extension of the knee is caused by a contraction of the quadricep. Okay, next the muscle activation involved in these phases is gluteus maximus acts on the hip to decelerate the forward motion of the lower limb and the quadricep femoris that keeps the leg extended at the knee and the thigh. Next is phase number two, which is foot flat or we call loading response phase. In this phase, body absorbs the impact of the foot by rolling and pronation and hip move slowly into extension caused by a contraction of the adductor magnus and gluteus maximus muscle. In this phase, our knee flexes to 50 degree to 20 degree and muscle activation during this phase are quadricep femoris which is uh, used to stabilize the knee in extension uh, supporting the weight of the body and foot inverters and inverter that contract in a balanced manner to stabilize the foot next is phase 3 which is mid stance uh, hip move from 10 degree of flexion to extension by contraction of the gluteus medius muscle and the knee reaches maximal flexion and then begins to extend during this phase. During this phase, the body is supported by one single leg and muscle activation is gluteus medius and calf muscles undergo eccentric contraction. And lastly is phase 4 is known as heel off or push off. It begins when the heel leaves the floor and body weight is divided over the metatarsal heads knee becomes flexible and, and our ankle uh, supinates and plantar flexes. 
Okay, that's all from me. I will pass to Alia Fatiha to continue explain for another phases. Acceleration phase is about rate at which velocity change with time in terms of both speed and direction. In mechanic terms, acceleration are also known as Peter quantities in that they have magnitude and direction. As we as we know, acceleration is also known as initial swing. For example, based on action during this phase is the heel of point from the lead leg to the first contact point for the contralateral leg. Next, mid swing phase is the period from maximum knee flexion until the tibia is vertical or perpendicular to the ground. Furthermore, terminal swing begins where the tibia is vertical and ends at initial contact. Mid swing goes from 75 until 87 of gait circle. Mid swing occurs at approximately when the reference extremity pass directly under the body. Next, it will extend from end of acceleration to the beginning of deceleration. For example, limb advancement continues and the type reach its peak advancement to progress through the walking circle during mid-swing. Lastly, for the natural walking gait phase is deceleration phase. Deceleration phase is the opposite of acceleration phase. As we know that, acceleration means the rate at which an object speeds up, while deceleration phase is an object slows down. Deceleration phase, also known as terminal swing, that it is the final phase of the gate circle. The final phase of the gate circle going from 87 until 100% of the circle. For example, the final investment of the sound takes place and the foot is positioned for initial foot contact to start the next gate circle. Next, I will talk about fast walking gate from initial contact phase. Initial contact phase means your leaf, leaf leg is out in front of you and about to touch the ground. This moment is whether your lane, you lane on heels, midfoot or forefoot, is called initial contact and marks the beginning of the stage phase. For example, key muscle activation in this phase are cordyceps, pretibial muscle and gluteus maximus. Next, I will talk about loading response phase. This loading response phase is also known as foot flat. The loading response phase is body absorbs the impact of the foot rolling in pronation. Furthermore, he moves slowly into extension that caused by a contraction of the abductor magnus and gluteus maximus muscle. In this phase, knee will flip to 50 degree to 20 degree while ankle plantar flexion increase to 10 degree to 15 degree. For example, key muscle activation during this phase are quadriceps, gastrocnemius soleus, soleus, and gluteus maximus. Okay, next we will move to the mid state. In this part, muscle key activation during this phase is gastronomius soleus on the right leg. It begins when the contralateral extremity lift of the ground at about 11% of the gait cycle. The midstream phase ends when the body is directly over the supporting limb at about 30% of the gait cycle. Midstream is the phase of gait where the foot assumes more of a support and overall stability role. The complete sole of the foot is weight-bearing as the limb supports the entire body weight. The maximum reflection occurs at the same time as maximum foot pronation. The breaking phase above continues until the left leg is directly under the hip taking maximum load as the body weight passes over it. 
The left ankle and knee are at maximum flexion angle. This moment is called mid stain. Next is the terminus stains. In this phase, key muscle activation involves a uh, illustrious adductus, slight quad activity, and gastrocnemius soleus. It begins when the body is directly over the supporting limb at about 30% of the gait cycle. The terminus stains phase ends just before initial contact of the contralateral extremity at about 50% of the gait cycle. Terminus stains begins when the center of the gravity is over the supporting foot and ends when the contralateral foot contacts the ground. During terminus stains, around 35% of the gait cycle, the heel rises from the ground. Thus, pre-swing corresponds to the gait cycle's second period of double limb support. Next is pre-swing. Key muscle activation that occur in this phase is ellipsis, adductus, hamstring and pretibial muscle. It is the last 10% of the stance phase and begin with initial contact of the contralateral foot and ends with toe off. Pre-swing is the transition phase between stance and swing in which the foot is pushed and lifted off of the ground. Initial swing goes from 60 to until 75% of the gait cycle. Next is the initial swing. The key muscle activation in this phase is the same as the pre-swing phase, which is illustrious adductors, hamstring and pretibial muscle. It begins when the toe lifts the ground and continue until the max knee flexion occurs. During initial swing, the hip, knee and ankle are flexed to begin advancement of the lift forward and create clearance of the foot over the ground. Next phase is the mid swing. During mid swing, the limb advancement continues and the tight reach its peak advancement. Key muscle activation during this phase is quadricep, hamstring, and pretibial muscle. Encompasses the period from maximum knee flexion until the tibia is in a vertical position. Lastly is terminal swing. It is the final phase of the gait cycle. The key muscle activations are quadriceps, hamstring, and pretibial muscle. Include the period from the point at which the tibia is in the vertical position to a point, just before initial contact. Uh, stimulating and injury guide, uh, glacius medius guide. It is also known as Sandelet Bar Guide or Lurching Guide when one side affected. Uh, the individual shift uh, the trunk over the affected side during stand space. When right glacius medius or hip abductory twist, it causes two things. The first thing is the body length over the left leg during stand space of the left leg. Second, right side uh, of the pelvis will drop when the right leg leaves the ground and begin swing space. For the foot, uh, foot drop or slapping guide, is, this is due to, uh, to dors dorsiflexor weakness caused by paralysis of common peroneal nerve. Uh, second, there will, there will be normal heel strike. Instead, the foot comes in contact with ground as a wool with a, a slapping, slapping sound. So, it is also known as slapping guide. Due to plantar flexion of the ankle, uh, there will be relatively late lengthening at the leading extremity. So, uh, to clear the ground, the patient lift the limb to high. Hence, the, hence the guide get it another name is high slapping guide. For the problem-based learning question, uh, number one, what biomechanical principle are most uh, evident in natural walking guide. Second, 
what biomechanical principle increase or decrease in importance relative to normal guide during fast guide? Third, what injury did you simulate? What biomechanical principle increase or decrease in important relative to normal guide during injured guide? What uh the last one is what muscle musculoskeletal structure structure are uh, affected in your simulate injury? Uh, hypotrophy. Uh, the light lightly change in muscular action and kinematic because of the injury and note where you might find biomechanical literature to confirm your diagnosis. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Nama saya Muhammad Syafiqi Dramigisli dengan nombor metrik D20201093154 akan meneruskan perbendangan report gate analysis di bahagian problem based learning question. Terdapat empat soalan yang Perlu kami jawab bersama-sama Soalan pertama yang berbunyi What biomechanical principle are most evident in natural gate? Yang kedua What biomechanical principle increase or decrease in important relative to normal gate during fast gate? Dan yang ketiga What injury did you simulate? What biomechanical principle increase and decrease in important relative to normal gate during injury gate? Dan yang keempat adalah What musculoskeletal structure are affected in your simulated injury? Hypothesize the likely changes in muscular action and kinematics because of this injury and note where you might find biomedical literature to confirm your diagnosis. Okay, sekarang kami akan teruskan dengan problem-based learning answer. Jawapan yang telah kami dapat sepanjang perbincangan Okey, untuk jawapan yang pertama iaitu Biomechanical principle are most evident in natural gate is balance Di mana kita dapat lihat di dalam video Dalam working gate, pergerakan dan juga Imbangan dalam working gate adalah statik Dari awal hingga akhir yang menyebabkan Kita dapat conclude bahawa balance adalah The most evident natural working gate untuk jawapan yang kedua adalah The force will decrease if during normal gait But it will increase during fast gait Meanwhile, balance will increase if it was a normal gait But will decrease during fast gait Di sini kita dapat lihat bahawa Force yang digunakan dalam normal gait adalah kurang Tetapi Ia akan meningkat sekiranya kita berada di dalam fast gait Kerana sekiranya kita ingin menambahkan kelajuan dalam pergerakan kita Force yang lebih diperlukan Manakala Ia akan berkait rapat dengan balance Di mana balance di dalam fast gate akan berkurang Dan balance di dalam normal gate Lebih tinggi kerana Di dalam fast gate kita lebih menumpukan Force berbanding balance okay, Sekarang kami akan teruskan dengan Jawapan yang ketiga iaitu What injury did you simulate? Berdasarkan video Kami telah simulate Injury ankle sprain di mana biomechanical principle-nya adalah force akan meningkat manakala balance pula akan berkurang ketika injury gate. Tambahan pada waktu stand phase, 60% force akan berkurang pada kaki yang tercedera hal ini kerana kaki yang berlawanan dengan kaki tersebut akan cepat-cepat membantu kaki yang cedera daripada berdiri tegak dan menerima kesakitan yang lebih manakala dalam swing phase pula 40% force akan meningkat hal ini kerana pada swing phase kaki yang tercedera itu akan menyentuh lantai dengan masa yang singkat supaya tidak akan mendapat kesakitan yang berlebihan Ketika kaki menyentuh ke tanah Kemudian jawapan yang keempat Yang bertanyakan What musculoskeletal structure are affected In your simulated injury Seperti ini dalam video Kami telah melakukan Simulate ankle sprain Yang melibatkan ligament Apabila ankle sprain ini berlaku Masalah 
maka ia akan melibatkan ligament di bahagian ankle yang membuatkan pergerakan individu akan menjadi lebih tidak stabil dan sukar untuk mengekalkan force dan balance yang sama seperti normal gait dan juga fast gait okay, kita teruskan dengan part yang terakhir iaitu part conclusion terdapat empat jenis conclusion yang telah kami peroleh sepanjang gait analysis ini iaitu yang pertama kami dapati bahawa terdapat pelbagai jenis kaedah berjalan oleh rakan-rakan yang sangat unik pergerakan mereka ketika melakukan walking gait analysis yang kedua Gate analysis ini menunjukkan bahawa keseluruhan badan kita terlibat sekali dalam walking gait Bukan hanya melibatkan bahagian kaki Yang ketiga, bahagian improper gait di mana injury gait Menunjukkan bahawa bukan sekadar bahagian yang tercedera saja yang memberi kesan Bahkan mungkin di bahagian pinggul dan juga paha juga terkesan Akibat untuk mustabilkan semula kaki yang injet tersebut Dan yang keempat adalah untuk membantu performa atlet seperti kita menggunakan aplikasi Kinovia yang mampu kita kaji sama ada apa yang perlu dilakukan untuk mengimbangkan balance dan juga force yang digunakan oleh seseorang atlet itu saja dari kami sekian terima kasih